Welcome, guys, to the inaugural episode of All in All, the show where I recap the week's events on a Sunday afternoon. Today is the 5th of July, just after the 4th of July. This is going to be an interesting, interesting show, around 10 minutes. Usually, I'm going to do some shorter form content. Figured I'd dip my uh, my toes in that. This week, we have the NBA returning, Liverpool winning the Premier League, Kanye running for president, and Shane Dawson cancellation, as well as a little Ghislaine Maxwell arrest at the tail end of the show so let's first get into the nba return to play is july 30th players arrive on july 7th Uh, their families will be allowed to arrive on the second round of the playoffs whenever that is they will play over a 16 day period uh playing double headers each day the playoffs will begin august 17th and the finals are slated to begin september 30th now some interesting new developments in the story of this return to play and the subsequent playoffs we have some players that are notables pulling out of the season to name a few we have victor oladipo from the pacers pulling out very recently we have pretty much probably most notably uh wilson chandler willie collie stein from dallas trevor ariza from portland and avery bradley from the lakers so it's going to be interesting to see how avery bradley leaving the lakers changes their playoff aspirations i personally don't think it changes the picture much i still think that the lakers have such a talented squad either way but it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of shakes up the field with all of the respective players leaving their teams i know also some players have tested positive uh, just off the top of the head, I can remember DeAndre Jordan from the Nets also contracting the virus. So we're going to see how this evolving landscape with the playoffs uh, kind of plays out and which players will be pulling out at which times and which players might be actually, you know, told to to not attend because they've contracted Corona. So it's going to be very interesting. And, uh, I, you know, I was going to write a blog on my playoff predictions, but I guess I'll hold off on that until we know more. Plus, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's still a little bit out from the season, so I know some scrimmaging is supposed to begin, so I'm really uh, looking forward to that. Moving on to our next topic for the episode, Liverpool won the league, the fastest in Premier League history. I, You know, it kind of brings back thoughts of the Bucks clinching a playoff spot this season, the fastest in NBA history. I mean, such a talented squad. Even though I'm a Man City fan and we're fighting that ban on UEFA, I can still sit back and appreciate uh, a club at top form like Liverpool. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they play out the rest of the season. Obviously, Man City routed them the other day for zip. So that for me was a little bit of retribution as a fan, but you know, I'm just happy to have the Premier League back as an organization. Uh, I'm interested to see how Manchester United plays off. Bruno Fernandes playing fantastically, looking like a guy that can elevate the entire squad. So we're going to see, we're going to see how the rest of the season plays out. Uh, But I, you know, obviously it's a foregone conclusion with Liverpool in the mix, but there are some other considerations. Uh, in in the seating for the league so we'll see about that but uh, i'll keep you guys posted on that as well all right for our third topic of the show kanye west running for president in 2024 originally he was slated to run in 2020 uh this is an interesting choice by kanye for sure it seems that he might have been able to run in 2020 though it would be smarter for him to make his campaign for 2024 because he would have missed out on some important filing dates for some vital states for his campaign though he could have Uh, secured if he wanted to some swing states if he entered the game a little bit late as an independent runner Uh, you know however we've seen this before from Kanye we've seen interesting decisions by him like this before I know there were some whisperings earlier on much earlier on of him running for president that kind of fizzled out now it seems like he's taking another crack at it a lot of people would kind of say that Kanye for you know running for president is a an interesting and weird move even some would say kind of outrageous but you know I would challenge that with what have we seen in 2020 that hasn't already been outrageous um (laughs) I mean it seems like 2020 uh, by its by itself as a year has just been curveball after curveball after curveball and who knows what's going to happen over the next four years so I think Kanye West running for president if he wants to take a crack at it all power to him Um, I know he's going, he said in his tweet that he was trying to unify the U.S. under God. So, like I said, if he wants to take a crack at it, I know his uh, his wife has been taking a crack at 
being a lawyer and has actually, you know, uh, released some wrongfully committed people from the court system. Uh, the optic, I'm sure for him running at first glance seems a little bit crazy. But uh, again, like I said, man, it's 2020. So a lot of stuff is changing. I wonder how people would react, you know, uh, if anyone wants to give me their predictions for how a Kanye uh, presidential run would go. Just feel free to let me know in the comments. And uh, let's move on to our next topic for the episode. All right, guys, for our fourth topic of the episode, we have the Shane Dawson cancellation. Guys, this is a big, big story. A lot of people have been talking about this. It kind of started off with some drama in the beauty community, I believe, with the likes of Jeffree Star, all those people. Um, and then it kind of ended up with a lot of videos surfacing of Shane Dawson doing blackface, of saying racial slurs, of miming jerking off to an 11-year-old Willow Smith. Now, a lot of people now are drudging up the videos and demanding an apology. He posted one. It was rather wishy-washy for my taste, if you want my personal opinion. I don't think... It was sincere. It looked almost as though he was reading off of a script. Obviously, now, Jaden and Jada Smith both voiced their concerns with the resurface video. I saw the video, honestly, pretty disgusting. That's the tune with most of the stuff that I've seen from this cancellation. The thing is, back when Shane was doing this, the whole bit of YouTube was pushing the envelope with comedy. Now, I'm in no way defending Shane Dawson here, but simply stating the fact that if he had cared so much back then, like he purportedly said he had, he probably wouldn't have done that because I don't necessarily subscribe to the whole notion of pushing the envelope and that being a sufficient form of comedy. I think there's other ways you can do it, other certainly more smart ways than, uh, than the way Shane Dawson went about it. Um, was his apology sincere? Not really. I don't tend to think so. What I would want to see from Shane, and I wanted to open up the forum or the dialogue with you guys as to a sufficient way that he could really show how he's changed over the years, uh, other than a, just a wishy-washy apology video, you know, take action, walk the walk, something like that. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head now how he really could go about reversing this this entire just dark cloud that he has hanging over him and for good reason but uh until i think of something i'm gonna let you guys in the comments take care of that feel free to open up the dialogue there i will be responding to any suggestions and any feelings and opinions on the matter now let's move on to our fifth and final topic for the episode Ghislaine Maxwell arrested about a year after Jeffrey Epstein got indicted and robocopped in prison. Now, obviously, this comes as great news to anyone with a conscience, being that she would traffic 14-year-olds and groom them for Mr. Epstein to get massages. Now, if anyone's been watching the documentary, I highly, highly recommend you do. Uh, the only thing that I would say about it is that it's a very depressing watch. Really, there's not much to say about this topic other than it's great that she's going to be indicted pretty soon. She's being brought up on six charges, including helping to transport and groom underage girls, and in some cases, was present and participated in the sexual abuse of minor victims. All right, one less disgusting person on this earth is great. Lock her up, throw away the key. Maybe she gets Swiss cheese like Epstein, who knows? But without further ado, that's been the inaugural episode of All in All. I have been your host, Jacob Cooperman. If you guys like this shorter form stuff, be sure to let me know in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, anything like that, and then go check out my podcast. Link is in the description for the uh, Apple versions, all that good stuff. Um, and guys, this has been your, your host. I'll see you next time.